righty. Welcome to Greater Grace. Wednesday night, Lake Worth. All right, Lord, we just pray for this uh, message tonight. Pray for the ones that are on their way, that they get here safely. Pray for Pres Pastor Chris McFarland, recovery. And whose birthday? And his birthday, Chris is? Happy birthday, Pastor Chris McFarland. Amazing man. And we just pray now for this service in Jesus' name. Amen. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. We're burning like a fire, awakening desire to burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here You're the reason we're singing Open up the heavens We want to see you open up the floodgates The mighty river flowing from your heart Filling every part of our praise Your presence in this place your glory on our face, we look into the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, we want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. With all of my heart I will praise you With all of my strength I will seek you With all of my day I will praise you For all of my way I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. I will bow down and heal you as king. I will serve you. And give you everything I will lift up My eyes to your throne I will trust you I will trust you alone I will give you all my worship I will give you all my 
I praise You alone I long to worship You alone are worthy of my praise I will give you all my worship I will give you all my praise You alone I long to worship You alone are worthy of my praise To know you as my Father, to know you as my King, to know you in your resurrection power and suffering, to know you as my teacher, to know you as my light, to know you as the lamp unto my feet all through the night. Oh, I want to know you. than before Oh I want to know you more and more To know you as my healer To know you as my love To know you as my advocate To heaven's throne above To know you as my savior to know you as my Lord, to know you as my coming King who reigns forevermore. Oh, I want to know you deeper than before. Oh, I want to know you. Giver, to know you as my friend, to know you as my comforter when all is crashing in. Oh, I want to know you deeper than before. Oh, I want to know you. Whoa, I want to know you more and more. Amen. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me This is my daily bread 
This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me And I I'm desperate for you And I I'm lost without you And I I'm desperate for you And I I'm lost without you I'm lost without you I'm lost without you I'm lost without you This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Amen, Lord. Thank you. crowd today tonight it's okay God is here that makes it worth it right Alrighty. actually I, had, I played around with two different messages tonight but uh, because of outreach last week I, I thought well maybe there was a guy that said he was going to come and you always have that confidence this guy's going to come right Alex, but then I thought about it, I said, well, he's a Muslim, and I said, I'm going to go visit him next week, but Muslims are allowed to, to lie to infidels, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe he's on his way, I don't know, but I'm hoping, but anyway, we still, whosoever will, we speak to whoever will, whoever, whoever they are, we have a word for them. Anyway, Lord, bless this word today. Let us take it as from you, because it is you. It's your word. It's your holy word, Lord, unchanging, so deep and so uh, amazing. It's just all over the place, and it's in our hearts, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Think about the, the so many messages that you can get out of one portion. It's amazing. Even when I was putting together this uh this little um, uh, Bible study kind of thing tonight. I was I was almost changed almost changed because I was on the same thing as last yesterday or Sunday, which was uh, on faith, and we're gonna it's all faith anyway, faith, grace, mercy, love, the whole shebang. We try to keep it in balance, but in chapter thirteen of John. Verse 1, now therefore the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he would depart out of this world into, unto the Father having loved his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father 
had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He raised from the supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with the, wherewith he was girded. So he had a towel wrapped around him and, uh, and he, he washed the feet of, the, of his disciples. And then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter said unto him, Lord, doth thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet, Jesus and Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not, needeth not save to wash his feet. But it's clean everywhere. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments, he was set down and again said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord. And ye say, well, for so I am. If, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come that you that, that it comes when it is come to pass, you will believe that I am he. Verily I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Pretty amazing, isn't it? I could have stopped in, in, at every verse and, and read something, but that's not the, what I'm getting to here. But the Lord washed their feet. He washed their feet. And there's a reason that he did that. And uh, and I think of this verse in Isaiah 52. The reason that he washed their feet is that they had graduated. We're talking about Emily going to school, right? She's going to graduate someday from that school. And we will graduate from a school too, from different schools, different degrees that we, uh, we go into. And in Isaiah 52, 7, it says, How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of them that bringeth good tidings and that publish peace that bringeth good tidings of good and that publishes salvation that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. So the feet, we think about the feet and that even the, the armor of God feet, our feet are shod with preparation of the gospel. So in, uh, in Matthew 4.19, as the Lord started his, as he started his ministry, as he was just starting his ministry, he needed a crew. He didn't have, it was just him at the time. So he went by to find the finest specimens he could find, right? So he goes by the, the Sea of Galilee, and, and as he said unto to, uh, to, uh, Peter and his brother, and he said to him, 
he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fisher of men. So he, he could have said, Come with me, and I will make you an amazing man of, and a woman of God when he calls us. He will make us into something. We're not that yet. But he's making us into something. God doesn't only save us, but he saves us for a purpose in Ephesians 3, 11, an eternal purpose. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee called Peter and his brother Andrew as they were casting their nets into the sea. In verse 20, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. You know, the thing of it is, is what they were doing when they heard the voice of the Lord, it wasn't important to them anymore. Something was different. They heard the voice of the Lord. Come with me, and I will make you something that you're not now. Fishermen of men. What, what is that? What is fishermen of men? I'm doing this, but I'm going to make you something more important. You're going after just fish. I'm going to make you fishers of men. See, it was, it was faith because they heard, and then they obeyed. They obeyed because they believed. They believed this was special. They heard, and they responded. And that's faith that pleases God in, in Hebrews 11.6. Why fish for men? Why? The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, the world is, is a sea of sinners sea of lost souls it is it's a whole sea of lost souls different problem everybody's all, everybody's lost sea of souls all have sinned see and we're in there they're in deep water it's dark out there it's like an ocean of sinners out there when we go out it's there in Romans 23, 6, 23a, for the wages of sin is death. Some people don't even know about what the wages is, the wages of sin. They're not educated, they're ignorant. But the Lord picked up ignorant and unlearned men. They didn't know very much, so he had to teach them. Right there, there weren't fishermen men yet. Right? Not yet. But they were with the one who would teach them. So the wages of sin is good. So the wages of what we do in our lives all have sinned. Then the payday would be death. But the B part of that is that the yin yang, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the good news. Made it simple. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3, 16. Sometimes that's all you need. Guys put that in, in the football games because people come to worship the football game. Let's go worship the football game. Okay, so everybody comes in there and then some guy at the end has to put up John 3, 16. God so loved the world. What's that got to do with football? It's got to do with you, right? You put God first. See, that's the good news. The ones that, that uh, bring that good news on, in the, to the sea of sin, right? They bring it to, to the sea of sin or the fishers of men. And like I said in Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful are their feet. Some people might look at their feet and say, they don't look so good, but they're beautiful if they're bringing something great. Bring an eternal life. Easy eternal life. Unmerited eternal, uh, eternal life. The lost are in this sea, the world, and they can't save themselves. There's a lot of books out there that tell you how you can save yourself. And there's a lot of uh, false doctrine out there say you can save yourself. But there's only one way. They can't say them. Even good people. In Psalm 39, 5, the B part says, uh, see, we have, you know, we're, the best that we are is vanity, which is empty. The best that we can bring. 
And we are inherent sin, the sin nature. We were shaping in iniquity in Psalm 51.5. We were that. We had iniquity in us when, when we were shaping. It's amazing. You say, oh, that little baby, that little baby has that seed of Adam in him. They can't escape it. We inherited it. In Isaiah 64, 6, it says, but we are all as unclean thing, and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. Imagine that. All of our righteousness, everything that we do good. If I can say up here and say the things that I've done in good in my life, and you hear preachers do that. Maybe I'll even do that sometimes. But it's not me that does it. If it's anything that's done, it's him. That's, I can't take credit. And, and some preachers or some people take credit of what they've done that's good. And like you say, some will be standing in front of God saying, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that in your name? Didn't we do this in your name? No, I don't know you. Workers of iniquity. Filthy rags. All those things you did were filthy rags. They brought glory to you because it's we. It's not him. It's him. But he's going to make us into fishermen, fisher of men, fisher of men. To, even to be a good fisherman, you've got to learn. You've got to know. You've got to be a little wise. You've got to be wise. And it takes a while. And you, you want to learn tricks from other good fishermen. It's like in a multitude of counseling. There's safety. There's learning in, in the church. Good fishermen. But all of our righteousness, it's like an unclean, filthy rag. I've, always, I've been a good guy. I was pretty good. I was pretty good. But we, we're saved in the boat above the water line. Christ. We're saved. Unsaved are in the water. The saved are in the boat. And we're like in the time now. Like in the times, if you look around out there, it's pretty brutal. Even in the churches. Churches are, they're, they're, some of the churches are so, there's some out there you won't even believe. Like people send me posts and stuff about churches. This woman was preaching that God is, uh, what, it didn't have a, you know, like, I don't know, whatever. She was a woman preacher, had all the, the uniform on of a, a something that's going to go down into hell pretty quick. But she was uh, she was preaching, fair, you know, wicked stuff, wicked, in the name of the Lord. And she was just say, well, Jesus is okay, right? And it's all about love. It's all about love. We got to love this. We got to love that. And we got to love that. We can love the people, but we don't love what they represent and bring because it's evil. In John 3, 18, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, we can't save ourselves, so we have to trust in Jesus. So the ones that don't believe what we bring in the simple message right there, 316, just believe. I mean, how, how hard is that? God sent him. He, and he, you know, John 3, see, you read John, the book of John. John chapter 1 it gives you, it pretty much lays out the, from the beginning to Christ's coming. And that everything that's made is not, is, is made by him. What we make is because if he didn't make us, then we couldn't make it, right? He, he gave us all the materials, and he gave us the know-how to be able to do it, to be able to think. We can't save ourselves. In Romans 6, 23b, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a gift. It's nothing we work for. It's none of our filthy rags that's going to get us there. It's believing him. That's it. It's a gift. I didn't earn it. I didn't do anything to get it. He just called me. And he sent a fisherman out for me. The teacher was all about the lost. In Matthew 18, 11, Jesus says, For the Son of Man 
has come to save that which is lost. And people could say, well, I found Jesus. No, I think Jesus found you. Right? You're not capable of finding him. You can seek, but he'll find you. He will find you. If you look and you seek, you'll find. But he's the one that finds you because he calls you out. In Luke 15, 4, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he lays it on, it's like he's, he's taken all of our burdens. We're not walking anymore. When he comes, he just lifts us up and carries us. Isn't it amazing? We're lost out there. God is looking for those sheep. He's looking for them. Calling out their name. I, I remember this. It was actually in a book I just read, but I, I had this story, heard this story years ago about someone was in Israel and he was watching the shepherds, how they go. And, and they go to the where they water their their uh, sheep, and they're all mingling together. But when they're ready to go, the shepherd will call them, whatever his voice is, and, and the sheep will come to him. And all the shepherds have their certain sound or voice. When they call their sheep, they come. And the, the guy that was writing a particular story I read yesterday, uh, I didn't hear this before, but he said, that he tried to, to mimic one of the shepherds' call, whatever it might be, and they ignore him. So it's, it's a, it's a uh, um, counterfeit. So the sheep will not go after, follow the counterfeit voice. And there's a lot of them out there, and they sound really good, too. They sound good, but they're not the, they're not the voice. They're not that. But God will get them. He will bring his in. In verse 6, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. He was, you imagine that to be a, that so excited about a, a lamb. You're excited about it. Let's celebrate. So let's kill the lamb <laughs> and have some lamb chops. No, but it's a, it, 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 in that realm, he loves, he, he knows his sheep. And he, and he calls them. He calls them by name. If we search, you know, our whole lives and only one person truly receives Jesus, it's worth it. It's worth it. I think about the, the sheep. We, we were, were where there were some sheep being slaughtered in Scotland, right? That was pretty brutal. But we weren't, we weren't watching it. We know that they were you know, making a lot of noise the night before. And then all of a sudden it's quiet. But, uh, but the sheep, to be sheared, they, they're okay with that. To you know, get their hair cut. Because they need their hair cut. We always feel better when we get a haircut, right? So the sheep are okay with that, to be sheared. But God uses sheep a lot, doesn't he? Lambs, different things. Sometimes we, uh, sheep had to be sacrificed for uh, uh, clothing for Adam and Eve. And a lamb had to be sacrificed for us, the lamb of God. And, that, and this, we use that. As we search our whole lives, if we find one, that's why we just keep doing it. You were thinking maybe Alex is Alex guy. We'll visit him again next Saturday. See if he comes. Say, hey, I'm not an infidel. <laughs> I'm a believer, but not in the same things that you believe. But uh, we can invite him again. Let's see if he'll come on a Wednesday night. But you can't be you know, distracted or, or disappointed in people. I, re I remember that as for a while I would be, I would see great expectations of people and I would be disappointed. But you just got to say, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing what God would have to do no matter what sight looks like, 
what it looks like. So we just search. The shepherd, he went, and he was a leader. And Jesus went. He went soul winning. Imagine that. That's what he did. He, he taught, but he was soul winning. He went soul winning every day, all the time. I would never go to a church that, that the pastor did soul run. Wouldn't happen. Never happened. They do, they do it, though. They're there, and they're major. I mean, they might win souls when you bring them to them. But Jesus went one-to-one, face-to-face. The, the pastors that I were under in my time, they went one-on-one, face-to-face. So it was easy for me to learn how to become a fisher of men. He was a fisher of men. He goes, I will make you to be fisher of men as I am, so is he. So are you. He says, as I am, so you be, will be in this time. So we represent him as ambassadors. And so we can ask them, we can get them into the boat, maybe. And I, I don't think we need a smoke machine to do that either. We can do it because he did it. He did it. He didn't have a whole lot of people. Actually, uh, uh, Peter did a, had more souls at one time than probably Jesus did in his time when he, when he preached in, in the Acts. It's just the anointing of God in us. And he says, you will do more than I did. Can you imagine that? We should be able to. We can reach people on the, on the Internet, wherever. We can reach these people. So we have a Jesus making us into these things. If we follow him, sometimes we've got to drop the nets, whatever they might be. The nets were not important anymore to them. It was a different, we had a different uh, vocation. In Luke uh, 2.49b, it says, Jesus says, I must be about my father's business. When he was young, when he was 12 years old, he was learning. And he disappeared from his parents. So he wasn't a fisherman man yet. He was only 12. His ministry didn't even start until he was 30 years old. So sometimes we, you know, he had to wait another 18 years. He had to learn more. He had to grow more. He was spirit taught. And then he went and he, he knew the plan, God's plan. He says, okay, let's go. We're going. He gets baptized. Then I'm going to get my men together, and we're going to go, and we're going to win souls. We're going to teach the gospel. I'm going to teach you the gospel, and then you're going to, to relay that to other people, and you're going to do just as I did. Simple. When, when the Lord came, he, he had discernment on people. We will have discernment. He says we will do the same thing. So we'll have discernment. We'll have a word in season, out of season. Doesn't happen right away. Happens a little bit at a time. Happens a little bit as we grow. Maybe we don't have confidence right now. Maybe we don't have the confidence to be able to share. But we ha- we already have everything that we need. You know, as believer priests, we are ordained and commissioned and totally equipped. In Colossians two ten, he says, "You know, we are complete in Him who is the head of all principalities and powers. We're already complete." I'm not waiting for another, another weapon. I got them all. I just got to put them on. We're in him, and he's in us. And we're on the sea of, of sin. We're on the sea of sin, of sinners. And uh, we've got a limited amount of time. But God's got us here. We're complete in him. He's the head of all principalities and powers. He's almighty. Almighty God is in us, and he works through us. He used ignorant and unlearned men. He didn't use the, the executive. We go and we hit, talk to people's heart, heart to heart. So that's why I say in our graduation, you know, as fishermen of men, it says Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful upon the mountains. We can't get any higher. 
are the feet of them. It says of him, but I say them. That bringeth good tidings. That publishes peace. That bringeth good tidings of, of good. That publishes salvation. That saith unto Zion. Thy God reigneth. Salvation. We bring salvation. It's amazing, isn't it? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much today for your word. Uh, for calling us. Say that, come and I will make you fishermen. We're coming, Lord. We want to be soul winners, Lord. And, and uh, we want to be fisher of men. And sometimes we, we're throwing the net on the wrong side of the boat, but we're still fishermen. And you're teaching us how to do it. And if we listen to you, you'll just you'll direct our path to which side of the boat or how to fish and what to say. But we trust you, Lord, and we're learning, and we thank you. And we pray there's anyone that's listening tonight that's never accepted Jesus as their Savior and been fished, been caught, and been brought into salvation, just say in your heart that you believe God, you believe him. And I believe you, Lord. I believe everything. I believe everything in your book. Teach me, Lord. Teach me. Make me a fisherman of men. We pray for that, and we pray for that. Uh, if anyone prayed to Jesus or committed their life to him, that they would send us a note. And now we pray for the uh, closing song in Jesus' name. Amen. blood will never lose its power do that no blood will never lose its power we could do that I don't have well we could do the first Corinthian okay Okay. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. the highest mountain it flows to the lowest valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day It soothes my doubts and it calms my fear. It dries all my tears. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day. Oh, 
little blood that gives me strength from day to day. Power. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, it flows to the lowest valley. Yes, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Okay, thank you, Lord. Bless this time. We pray for outreach this week, Saturday, and that we'll have a good turnout. And thank you, God. Thank you for your word tonight. And bless us as we. Uh, in our fellowship and as we go, in Jesus' name, amen.